that's that's sort of funny because it was really a matter matter of whittling down my belief in government to try to get it to be consistent and moral. Like I wanted a small protector government, and then I realized, well, I can't tax people like forcibly because that's immoral. And I whittled it down to the point that until I accidentally noticed, that's not even government anymore. I'm just describing people just sort of organizing as people and nobody has any special rights. So it was sort of a, and this was 22 years ago, so it was sort of a strange realization to, to suddenly notice that like completely accidental, it wasn't like down with government entirely. It was like, I'll describe the perfect government. And by the time I did, it wasn't government anymore. And just sort of accidentally noticed, oh, that makes me an anarchist. Oh well. Oh wow. I have a collection of their the fallacies. I think mostly it's their inability to honestly look at their own belief systems. Um, like I was just talking about on stage, they they think in terms of euphemisms and vague generalities that don't really describe the the, the coercion that government always is. And so they'll say, well, I want a policy that takes care of the poor or something. And the, most of the challenge is just getting them to admit what they actually condone, which, which makes most of them uncomfortable when they get down to the, the specifics of it. Um, because they're, they've been taught to be scared of the notion of not having a big ruling class. So they're constantly making excuses for how we need, we need this particular kind of big ruling class and they're not even honest about well, what does that really mean? What does it look like in real life? What does that literally mean to me if I disobey, you know, whatever policy you want them to, to implement? So it's really just getting them to be honest, first honest with themselves, because most of them don't even really didn't think it through, don't even know what they advocate, which is totally true of, of me when I was a, a statist, and it's still true of pretty much everyone I meet, is they're not even clear on their own head what they're cheering for. Um, there were a num number of bits and pieces here. There was like Albert J. Nock, um, we wrote Our Enemy the State. Um, one that most people still haven't heard of, which is unfortunate because she's probably my favorite, is Rose Wilder Lane, um, who wrote The Discovery of Freedom. Um, she, she comes closest to describing it the way I do. Still not quite the same, but um, where it wasn't a matter of, I think A will work better than B. It's a matter of, we figured out that freedom is what's real and these weird games people play to try to control it and to, to then give away their sovereignty because they imagine that that thing is the right to rule them, that's all an illusion, that's all imaginary. Um, and so her book, uh, Discovery of Freedom, is amazing. And it was you know, years and years and years ago. And then there's you know, Frederick Douglass and there's The Law by Frederick Bastiat and um, Lysander Spooner, you know, all the other ones. Just Okay. <laughs> ones that everybody else right. will cite too, um, but but my favorite one that most people still haven't heard of um, is is Discovery of Freedom by Rose Wilder Lane. Yeah, there, there's sort of two sets to it. Like I could give predictions and suggestions of it could go like this and it could go like that. I don't usually do that because I think that's actually feeding the mental crutch. It's like telling them, "Don't worry, I have a master plan of how everything will work." No, I don't. Like, I have some ideas, and I'll, I'll just outright say to them, whatever ideas I have, there will be a thousand that are better that people who know more than me will come up with. And that's the point. That's the point of, of having a free society, is it isn't, let's put that one guy in power and hope his ideas aren't horrendous. It's, let's have everybody decide what they want to do and who, whose ideas they think are good and voluntarily organize and cooperate however they want. Because... You know, there, there are so many examples. One of the examples I like to use is this. If it was a couple hundred years ago and somebody said, Larkin, how would you make it so we could all communicate? This isn't the answer. There's zero chance, even if I could live a hundred years, there's zero chance I would come up with this on my own. And yet a whole bunch of individuals inventing stuff and cooperating and saying, we might be able to do this, made a miracle. And, and this is like, people laugh at my miracle because it's like ancient, stupid little flip phone. It's the most pathetic miracle around. And yet it's still a miracle. Um, and so I try not to reinforce the notion that you should replace government master plan with my master plan and try to get people to start thinking like responsible adults and realize if people are actually free and can decide who to support and what to buy, 
the, the real world results of that are a thousand times better than government ever will be. And it doesn't mean I can magically say what's going to exist in a hundred years. If I could, I should be emperor of the world. Right. The whole point is freedom leads to a better result than having anybody imposing a master plan on us. I, I think it's, I think morality is actually objective. That's one of the things I don't bother talking about very often because there's enough commonality among most people, like don't attack somebody and beat them up and take his stuff, that the exact definition of it, which, you know, I'll, I'll have that discussion with people for fun and, you know, spend 50 zillion hours discussing the intricacies of the, the various theories. But because my main concern is, how about we end this giant evil authoritarian monstrosity? I don't even bother getting into that because most people on most, you know, most of the time can understand it's bad to attack people, it's good to, to organize voluntarily and peacefully, and that's good enough for me. So if, you know, most people don't bother like nitpicking about the details, nitpicking is useful, but it's actually unnecessary to get most people to realize government's not okay, it's not helpful, it's not good. Well, it, it, it's like, it's huge. It's like if you, if you haven't spent years and years indoctrinating someone, then I don't have to spend years trying to unindoctrinate them. Um, I have a 21-year-old daughter. I don't, I don't mention her very often in public because I have enough trolls and obnoxious people. Um, and I, her mom and dad were anarchists by the time she was born. She was never taught to bow to authority. And so to her, the rest of the world must look really dang weird because it wasn't a cult she had to be deprogrammed from. It was a cult she grew up surrounded by, but never having been taught that stuff. Um, and like I said, if, if we're not making them into these people with twisted, confused views of reality, you don't have to untwist it. And just, just, the, just the fact that so many voluntarists are, are having children and, and, and doing the peaceful parenting and you know, whatever you want to call it, all that stuff is like really hopeful for the future of humanity because these are people we don't have to, you know, you don't have to go fix them if you didn't break them in the first place. I think it's, it's just a numbers game. Like it's just how many people believe in the, the moral legitimacy of the ruling class because people say, well, well, how do we end this? We how, how do we end that? And you know, there are people using cryptos to undermine the extortion racket, which is awesome. There are people who are big on Second Amendment rights and like we need guns, so we have the right to, you know, so we have the ability to forcibly defend if they do this, which I'm fine with that too. But to me, it's a numbers game. Like if there's only a few of us, you know, we're doomed. You can run off and hide in a cabin in the woods or something, and you might get away with that. But I want to see the whole world become free and rational and moral. And if enough people give up the belief in authority, enslaving them becomes impossible. How exactly they will choose to do that, you know, is anyone's guess. I actually think for the most part, it will be with a whimper and not with a bang. It won't be big, glorious revolution. It will be, oh yeah, there's some people over there who say we're supposed to give them money and none of us have for 50 years. Are they even there anymore? Right. Like, that's how it'll actually go away in most cases where it just gets ignored into oblivion as people stop believing in the cult and stop paying any attention to it.